Over the weekend, NVIDIA confirmed it would purchase ARM from SoftBank for $40 billion. Now, what is ARM, and why is NVIDIA buying it, and what does any of this have to do with the Raspberry Pi? Well, let's start with ARM. ARM can refer to a number of things, but let's start by talking about the company ARM Holdings. They have lineage dating back to Acorn Computers, a British computer manufacturer founded in the late 1970s that designed the first Acorn RISC machine architecture, aka ARM. The first ARM products they made went into BBC microcomputers, which were built with an emphasis for education, and they were actually an inspiration for the Raspberry Pi we know and love today. Anyways, ARM continued evolving its chip designs and eventually started licensing the blueprints for ARM processors to the point that today, ARM architecture chips power almost all mobile phones, the majority of tablet computers, and soon even common desktop and laptop computers once Apple starts selling its new ARM Macs. So ARM is a really big deal. And there are tons of companies who license ARM designs and their products, including Apple, Amazon, Atmel, Texas Instruments, Broadcom, and even NVIDIA. Now, why is NVIDIA buying ARM, and why is SoftBank, ARM's current owner, willing to give it up? Well, someone could probably write a book about why SoftBank is selling ARM after how its other investments have been doing in 2020, so I won't explore that topic in this video. But one of the main reasons NVIDIA is willing to pay $40 billion for ARM is to entrench themselves further into the realm of artificial intelligence and machine learning processing. NVIDIA is incredibly popular in the AI and ML space, and again, I'm sure someone could write a book about the reasons why, but why buy ARM? Well, mostly I think because the power of the combined buzzwords between NVIDIA and ARM is irresistible to technologists and investors. Just listen to this paragraph from NVIDIA's press release. Uniting NVIDIA's AI computing capabilities with the vast ecosystem of ARM CPU, we can advance computing from the cloud, smartphones, PCs, self-driving cars and robotics to edge IoT and expand AI computing to every corner of the globe. I mean, what hot tech buzzword wasn't mentioned in that paragraph? I guess maybe Kubernetes and space rockets, but I digress. Anyways, NVIDIA is buying ARM to up its game in the AI and machine learning space. But what does any of that have to do with the Raspberry Pi? Well, two things. First, NVIDIA has a development board, the Jetson Nano, which is a direct competitor to the higher-end Raspberry Pi 4. It's a bit pricier and offers only a few features that differentiate it from the Pi, but I don't doubt that NVIDIA would set its sights on the Pi makerspace if the profit margins were good enough and they had a better relationship with the free and open source software community. But second, and more important, every Raspberry Pi ever made is powered by a system on a chip built by Broadcom with ARM licensed cores. So the important question is this, how is Broadcom's relationship with NVIDIA? Well, there's bad news and there's good news. And note that no video I make here would ever be able to do justice to the long and winding history of the semiconductor industry that's led us to today's news. The bad news, Broadcom and NVIDIA are direct competitors in many spaces, especially in some of the hot growth markets like Internet of Things or IoT and edge computing. So don't expect NVIDIA to ever cut Broadcom slack in licensing deals. Also, outside of their relationship with Broadcom, NVIDIA is not necessarily known for being a friendly, free and open source company all the time, though they do have their toes in the open source water. The good news? Nothing's likely to change in the short term. NVIDIA is keeping ARM structure and licenses as is, at least for the foreseeable future. So we should expect at least a few more years of new mobile chips that trickle their way down to inexpensive single board computers like the Raspberry Pi. And in other good news, a shakeup is bound to happen, as Intel's seeming stranglehold they had on the entire CPU industry for years is unraveling this decade, and competition could make for better, cheaper chips. For example, IBM completely open-sourced the power architecture late last year, and there's also the RISC-V CPU architecture, which is completely license-free and open-source, and there are already some manufacturers building RISC-V chips. As we've seen with Apple and even Linux in recent years, switching architectures isn't impossible and sometimes it brings benefits. In the case of Apple with PowerPC to Intel, it brought about better mobile performance. And in the case of Intel to ARM on tablets and mobile devices, it brought about vast improvements in battery life and in performance per watt efficiency. A forced transition from ARM to something else could be a net benefit in, in computing if it does have to happen. I'm an optimist, so I hope that'd be the case. 
but that's all speculation. I know for the foreseeable future, we won't see much change, just newer, faster Raspberry Pis. But it is a little sad to me to see a plucky British computer manufacturer, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, who used a CPU architecture built by another longtime British computer manufacturer, have to now say they're using tech license through a US company, even if ARM's HQ will still be in Cambridge, UK. I'm not even British, but it feels similar to how Mini, a uniquely and in Mini's case somewhat oddball British thing, is not the same now that it's owned by a German company, BMW. Do the massive tech conglomerates in the US really need to eat up another non-US company? I guess so. The stock is already up nearly 10% today, so it, at least the stockholders seem to be happy. I hope that there's nothing but good news for everyone, though, after this deal goes through. All I know is I'm ready to compile my Raspberry Pi projects on whatever chip architecture it takes. I'm too in love with these tiny, inexpensive computers to stop using them. If you like learning about Raspberry Pi, cluster computing, or pretty much anything tech, please consider subscribing. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling.